Hey guys, it's me, Bad Gershom, and thanks for clicking on my gaming PC build. The prices of the builds for this month are 500, 600, 750, and 1000 dollars. If you want to see a special video with a fifth price point, give me a suggestion down in the comments section. I'm going to show you a $750 gaming PC that will let you get into the world of PC gaming. Whether it's a gift or it's just a personal build, this is going to be the best possible starter PC that I can make at this price point. It will let you play every game you throw at it at high to maxed out settings, including the more resource heavy games like Battlefield 4, Watch Dogs, and Titanfall. Some of the older and less resource heavy games like Skyrim, South Park The Stick of Truth, and DayZ should be able to be run maxed out along with any other games. The graphics card in this system should last for a good number of years until an upgrade is actually needed, so with that being said, let's get started with the build. For the processor, I chose the AMD FX6300. This is a 6-core processor clocked at 3.5GHz and is actually very easy to overclock. I chose this processor over my usual choice of the cheaper AMD Anthelon because it's a 6-core processor. It's recommended for games like Battlefield 4, and because more games in the future will be moving up to 6-cores, this is an excellent processor to get started with. If you want the build to be a little bit cheaper and you don't really care for the extra cores, you can always go with the Anthelon X4 760K, which is a quad-core and is $20 cheaper. I'll leave a link in the description for you if you want to go with that route. The FX6300 will run you about $110. For a motherboard, I chose the Gigabyte GA970A UD3P. This motherboard is a good fit for this build as it supports overclocking with the processor, has two USB 3 ports, eight USB 2 ports, four memory slots, and it's overall just a perfectly solid motherboard for the extras that you'll need for around $80. For the graphics card, I chose the 3 Gigabyte Gigabyte Radeon R9-280X. Based on some benchmarks, the baseline R9-280X that isn't overclocked should yield about 70 frames per second on Ultra at 1080p playing Battlefield 4. It'll run anything you throw at it and this card is simply a great choice for this build and you can get it for about $290. Now memory isn't that hard of a component to go with, so I just went with an 8GB stick of Crucial Ballistic Sports DDR3 RAM. It's rated at 1600MHz, which is plenty for games and some multitasking, but unfortunately the price of RAM is constantly fluctuating, but as of right now you have to spend about $70 for 8 gigs. Hard drives are very simple components to pick, and they constantly stay the same, and once again I'm just going to go with a 1TB Western Digital Caviar Blue. The Caviar Blue is a very reliable hard drive, and a terabyte has plenty of space for your games, movies, music, pictures, and it's just a great fit for everything you need to store. Now there is a small difference between the Caviar Blue and the Caviar Black, which is around $20 more. Now unless you get a good deal, or you just want a small bump in speed, I recommend you go with the Black, but if not, you'll be perfectly fine with the Blue. The Caviar Blue comes in around $60. Up next is the power supply, which I believe is the most important part of any build, mainly because you need power to run your system. Always remember to never be cheap with the power supply, because it runs everything, and you definitely do not want your PC to catch on fire. So make sure you pick a good quality supply over a good sale price. My recommendation is the Corsair Builder 600 watt power supply. 600 watts is plenty for this build and it can still be used to upgrade your PC. It's 80 plus bronze certified which means it's a high quality power supply and it can actually help you lower your power bill. If you plan on upgrading your graphics card in the future though it will take more power, but this power supply should be able to run whatever you need. You can get this for around $50. The optical drive on this PC is really not needed unless you have a Blu-ray drive, and mostly unless you use CDs, the only thing you'll ever be using it for is to install the OS. Now I just went with a cheap yet reliable reader and burner which is an ASUS. It's a simple basic drive and it'll only run you about $17. You can also upgrade to a Blu-ray drive if you want to put in an extra $40, so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go with that. Now finally is the case, and once again this is where your own personal opinion or your general cheapness comes in. Sometimes computer cases can go up to the hundreds, so to keep this build moderately cheaper, but still have a good number of extras, I went with the Cooler Master HAF912. This is a good quality case that has a clean style and holds everything together really well with some really good airflow. It's your build, so you can do whatever you want in terms of a case, but if you just want a cheap, reliable one, you can get this case for around $45. Well, that's about it, guys. This is my guide for a quality $750 PC that should last for quite some time before it ever becomes outdated. Now the prices of any components can change often, so I'll be leaving a link in the description to PCPartPicker.com. It's a website that you can use to plan out your PC build online and see the lowest prices for the components that you need. That's all for this video guys, so if you like this video and you want to see some more of them, click on the like button. I'll have three other builds available for you guys this month, one for our $500, $600, and $1000 gaming PC. Click on the links in the video when they're available if you want to see them, and if you enjoy my videos, you can click here to subscribe to my channel. It really does help me out and it shows me you want to see some more of my builds. I also probably should mention that I started a new series of videos that I put up every week. 
It's a review series called Unfair Opinions, and my latest review about Iron Man 2 is located right here. I really hope to see you guys in my next video.